for your section, we wanted you to take us through some of the best practices around, um, you know, you've, you've been working with a lot of customers, both Peak and, you know, many others that Informatica uh, deals with every day. What are some things you would walk us through as you know, things to think about if you're on this webinar that you want to take with you uh, as you move forward down this path? Great. Thanks, Darren. Good morning, everyone. I've been doing SAP integration at the data layer uh, for about 15 years, so I want to talk briefly about some of the issues that I've encountered during that time frame and some of the stuff I'm seeing most, most recently. The first one out of the box is this concept of web services versus native connectivity. I'm seeing a lot of push now in the industry, just use web services for SAP, don't worry about the complexity of it. At my level, what I've seen is that people have not made the investment to do the native connectivity to SAP, therefore the movement towards web services. We've been building integration with SAP for about 15 years, so we have made the investment. We have connectivity with all the native APIs in SAP. There's no free lunch on the web services side, too. I drank the Kool-Aid, jumped into it pretty hard about 10 years ago. Uh, if you implement web services and use that as the approach to integrate with SAP ECC, something's got to do the translation and something's got to do the processing load. And usually that falls back on the SAP, which is already very busy. With us, it's Burger King. You can do it either way. <laughs> use web services. You could use native. Personally, I'm a native kind of guy, so I would recommend doing native, which we have. Out of the gate, you need to think about how you're actually going to do uh, your promotion to dev, test, and prod. And as Tim indicated in his presentation, we have the capability to generate ABOP natively. So we can look at metadata structures in SAP, generate an ABOP program, dynamically upload it, and pull the data out of SAP. You have to promote that into the production system for go live. So we have a process and a methodology to promote from dev test, the ABOP we generate, into production and just run that through a different set of RFCs. So something to start thinking about right out of the gate. Uh, invariably, you're going to get data issues. I know SAP is generally the system of record. There's 40 to 50,000 accounts out there. All, as Darren indicated, the social enterprise is now trying to interact with the system of record, which tends to be SAP. I can't tell you how many times, even though this pristine system of records starts pushing stuff into other applications and you run into data issues. So it's probably a good idea at least to profile the data as you're taking it out and look at it and work with someone who has a lot of experience in that. The next thing, which is fairly common, is there's going to be customizations in SAP. Often these are custom structures and not modifications of SAP itself. So we have the capacity to handle those customizations. That gets a little complicated if you take the web services route. So there's a bit of complexity that gets added there, which we handle with the native interface very seamlessly. And lastly, uh, I wouldn't leave home without experts. I've uh, um, been doing SAP a while. Everyone knows SAP pretty well. It's got it. But on the integration front, you can really save yourself a lot of time and effort just on the knowledge level of what goes where by using a, a, t a team that's done this before. Switching to the next part from fundamentals to initial implementation, as Tim indicated in his presentation, test everything end to end. So you're going to have native APIs with us. So test your ABOP end to end, test your IDOCs and BOPIs end to end, and make sure those connect into the target systems, both Salesforce, any other applications, whether they're cloud-based or not, and databases. Make sure that's flowing. I'd like to have a dollar for every time I've heard people say, I'm going to take all the pricing information out of SAP, put it off platform, just do everything off platform. I've been involved in some pretty major projects which tried to take pricing conditions out of SAP and put them off platform. The pricing, the pricing information at the storage level tends to be fairly complicated in SAP, and then there's an engine process that sits on top of that. My caution again here is if you're thinking about doing that, in some situations it works to some degree, I would bring in the pros. At this point in life, I know what I don't know, and pricing's a tough one. So I would bring in the pros that have dealt with pricing on SAP. And then lastly, when you get ready, and on the initial implementation, when you get ready to deploy, the dev test process in SAP is uh, pretty loose. But once you go live, it's highly controlled by the basis team. Our cloud technology can run anything that our on-premise technology can build. So you can deploy these routines into the cloud and run them seamlessly and run your entire SAP integration in the operational environment from the cloud. And then lastly, on the testing. As Mark showed in his demonstration, and we used extensively in the peak engagement, we have package mappings, and as Darren indicated in his uh, initial lead-off, for the common uh, scenarios in SAP. So that's take master data out of SAP, put it into Salesforce, 
do the bi-directional interactivity with Salesforce. We'll provide those mappings. We provided them to Tim. They're going to be available soon for general consumption in Informatica. So you need to test those in the end and then deploy those into production. Again, I'm going to come back to the data quality thing. Make sure you've resolved these issues so you don't all of a sudden load up Salesforce and there's problems there that you haven't anticipated. And then lastly, be ready to go live. Have a methodology to promote the IBOP into production. Have, have the process worked out so the cloud is ready to consume the routines you've built interactively and are running those before you go live. And that's it. Thanks, Darren. That's a great, great set of uh, um, guidance or uh, overview, Mike. Um, so, Tim, anything you would add or anything that really resonated from what Mike went through in your implementation that you'd want to maybe amplify? Yeah, it was actually one of the things that I uh, wanted to bring up is I said before that our environment's hosted. So, performance upgrades uh, for us in our SMP environment actually hit our, you know, that's real money that we have to spend. It's, it's not like something we can capitalize. You know, we've got our monthly fee, so to reduce the load that we put on the SAP system, you know, yes, we're moving data out, but we don't have the we wouldn't we don't have the amount of users slamming the SAP system for data. So getting that that data out and into an environment that uh, doesn't slow our SAP system down, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to the day when our month end uh, people aren't scrambling and complaining of of speed uh, when we <laughs> when we finally realize this. So. That's the one thing I wanted to share is if anybody else has a hosted environment, you know, those, those are the kind of considerations uh, to take into account.